Welcome back. In today's video, I am going to be making a coiled basket out of this nude braided macrame cord. It is five millimeters. I will have a special discount code for you in the description box below if you would like to purchase this from madformacrame.com. You will need a darning needle. I will also put a link for these in the description box, a pair of scissors. I am going to be using for the first time this beautiful cotton frizz ribbon. I have been wanting to try something like this for so long with one of these baskets, so I'm super excited to use it today. This is the color Baby Pink, and you can get some with the link in my description box below as well and save 15%. And I will be using the half inch filler cord, and of course, this will also be linked in the description box. Let's get started. I will begin with the nude at the base of my basket. And when you buy this, just always make sure that you are pulling from the side that has the little knot. And when you're done using the roll, it's important to always knot that back up so you know which side to pull from. So I'm going to start with just like a handful of it. Okay, this will be good. Place one end in your needle. Okay, and then for the filler cord, this is cut at an angle already, just a little bit, so I will go ahead and leave it like that and you can just pull out any loose pieces. And so to begin, you will take your cord, opposite end of the needle, lay it flat on top of your filler cord, and then holding it tight, begin to wrap and just leave that open right here at the end. Okay, just make sure there are no spaces. Looks pretty good to me. So now I will fold it over, squeeze it really tight, and continue to wrap. Get as close as you possibly can. This is just going to hide the filler cord. Let's do a couple more wraps. Okay, so I'll go one more. And let's do a test. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it. Yep, that's perfect, exactly where I want it to be. So now I will take this end and push it through the center. Pull. Then hold it nice and tight and continue to wrap. So I'm going to wrap it four times. Okay, and once you have it there, Push it through the center again. And then you wrap it four times again. And I will be doing four each time for the beginning, probably this first round. And then after I get to like the second or third round, I start to double wrap according to the spaces that I see. So that could be four, that could be three, that could be five. You can do it by eye to what you think looks good for your basket. Just remember when you are making these, there is no right or wrong way to do it. I will say that you don't want to leave too much space though when you are doing the single wraps because the bigger the space you leave, the more unsturdy your basket will be. So to keep it nice and sturdy, you want your spaces to be just like about this much apart. I'm going to see what it looks like going through the center one more time. If I don't like it, then I'll take it out and then go through this side. Sometimes you just have to test it before you make your final decision, and that is okay. So, yep, that looks good, so I'm going to keep it right there. All right, and then this actually fell out. So now I will begin going through this section right here. And continue wrapping. OK, 
Okay, so we are coming close to the part where I said you can start doing it by eye, but I think that this is still going to be a good space right here. Yep, that's a good placement. And so right here, I did four again, but it goes directly over that. And you know what? I don't really want it to go directly over it, which you can. It's not wrong if you do, but it does kind of make this a little too close together. So I will wrap it one more time. So that was five wraps. And then I will go ahead and push it through for the double wrap. And this is going to be my last one with this piece because I am running out. But as you can see, that placement is good. It's like right after it. If I would have went directly over it, it would have like kind of been at an angle and I don't like the way that looks for my baskets, but you can do it however you want. So I'm going to use a clip to hold that in place while I cut some more cord. Anytime you add a new piece of cord, you should always go like this to make sure that there are no knots. And the longer you cut this, the more chances you have of getting a knot so don't cut it too long and actually we had a live workshop last night and someone suggested instead of going because I normally go at the bottom and then I put my new piece on top actually where's my other piece okay I normally go top and bottom but then it ends up with this like little lump because of that extra cord and she said well what if we do on the sides so more like this on the side and it worked out so much better so I'm going to just I'll show you one more time. So what we'll do is we'll place that new tail on the top and the old one is at the bottom, but they're, and now I'm gonna try to like make them go more to the side and then hold them in place and then wrap. And now you have your new piece of cord added and it stays nice and flat. So that was just such a great tip. I only did three, but I want to add my next piece here. So I will push it through, and if I don't like the way it looks, I can just take it out. That's perfect, I actually love it right there. So if I would've went four, it would've been right over that. If I would've went five or six, it would've went too far over, the gap would've been too large. So that fits there perfectly. So the whole time you're making this, again, you can choose to do the same number every single time, or you can just kinda do it according to what you think looks good. So there's three, I'll do four here because it's going to bring it right into the center of these two, which is perfect. So this is all you do. You're just gonna continue doing this until you have the base size that you want. I'm going to make this a little bit larger and it actually won't take as long because I'm using that half inch filler cord. So I'm going to make a bunch of rounds and then I will be back to show you how we will start to work up the sides. Okay, so I have five rounds so far, and I can tell because from the center, you just count out in all directions. So there's five in all directions. So I'm still working on the base, but I want to start adding in this pink color. So I'm going to undo this. Okay, I went ahead and cut a piece, and then same thing, put one end through your needle, and of course, make sure there's no knots. And then the exact same way we added the cord before, we will just go over, place that to the side, place this tail end, and then begin to wrap. So this material is fabulous, my goodness. This is my very first time using it and I already am in love with it. And continue the process, I will do this um, for round six and seven for sure. I might do this for a couple rounds and then begin my sides with this color. But I was just doing this as an accent towards the bottom. If you choose to use this, you can use this for the entire basket. You can do it just at the bottom, just at the top, wherever you want. So I'm going to continue doing a few rounds of this and then we'll start the sides. So I just completed two rounds of the fuzzy ribbon. So I am up to, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds. 
and I am ready to start my side. So I'm going to do one more round using this just for the side, like the very bottom part of the side, and then I'm going to switch back to this one. So for the side, you are going to wrap it the same way that you've been. but you are going to bring it forward close to you. If you want it to go straight up, you're going to leave it at a slight angle if you want it to go out. So I want this to go straight up, so I'm going to bring this directly over the previous round. And then you do the exact same thing, just feed it through the back, pull it up, and then continue to wrap. But make sure the whole time that you're just holding it towards you, just pull towards you and continue wrapping and then double wrapping that way. So I'm going to do one more round of this and then I will switch back to my braided cord. Okay, so because of all this fuzziness, when I switch back to this color, I am actually, instead of putting it flat like I normally would, I'm going to weave this back in underneath here and then continue. Just so that it stays neater and you don't see the pink fuzzies coming through underneath the white. So just weave it in and then give it a trim. And this was just my first round of the side and I'm going to do at least three or four more. So to add my new piece, I'm just going to go ahead and start wrapping and then continue the way that we've been going. And again, I am keeping it straight over the previous round because I want them to go straight up I just wanted to show you really quick what it's looking like so far. So it's working out very well that I can do exactly three and then do my double wrap. I have a total of 11 rows so far. This is actually the 11th right here and I'm going to be finishing with it. So I need to bring it to finish right here. But to give this basket a different design, what I'm going to do now is in this last bit of space, I will wrap this as a single wrap up until about the halfway point and then I will do a double wrap to connect it and then I'm going to single wrap it again until we meet this part right here and I'm going to add this pink back in and this color is actually the dusty rose. I think I told you it was the baby pink but it's the dusty rose. So what I'm going to do is I will continue to wrap this just by itself like single wraps like I said so I'm not going to go I'm not going to go double wrap anymore. I'm going to single wrap it all the way until I hit my halfway point. Okay, so that is my halfway point. And I am going to do a double wrap now, but I wanna start making an angle off to the side. So I will go ahead and insert my hook underneath. wrap it like we've been with the double, but I'm going to do that two times to make this secure. Okay, and now I'm going to continue to single wrap until I get closer here or until I run out of this cord. Okay, so here is where I'm at right here. So now I'm going to do another double wrap, but I will double wrap it to this row, the one right below the one we were currently on. So right down here, pull it through. Then I will put it here, right over this. And wrap it back around. Let me see if I can show you this side really quick. Okay, so I'll bring it back here again. Oops, sorry. It's awkward when you're closing these for the camera angle. And then I'm going to go through it one more time. Back to the inside. And then again, one more time through here. Okay, so that I can go back to where I was, I'll go back through here. Let me turn this and show you. So 
So now when you're looking, I'm here. Okay, but so it's coming close to an end. So I'm actually going to trim this right now. And I'm just gonna start right here at an angle. And now that I've cut it, I'm going to cut it just a little bit more to make it just slightly thinner. Okay, so now it is thinner and I'm going to add back this dusty rose. Now I will finish it using the dusty rose color. So I'm going to cut a piece and then show you how to close it. Okay, I'm going to remove this and wrap this just a couple more times. Make sure you get as close as you can so that you are covering that filler cord. Trim because I do not need all that. And now I'm going to add this color back in, but I'm going to flip it upside down and add it the same way we were adding everything before, which sorry, it's out of the view because I had to wrap it. I'm gonna wrap it again. Okay, so I'm just wrapping it to make sure that it's nice and secure. And I apologize that you can't see it as I am wrapping it. Okay, so now I have this, the tail, both tail ends in nice and secure. I'm going to take this and I'm going to poke it through to the bottom. So I'm going to flip this over. So we're back to the inside, pull it through. We will continue to wrap it from the inside back out and then out back in. Just continue to wrap it until all of this is covered and it's going to kind of go towards the bottom. I will do my best to show you on camera, but it might be kind of hard to show you each angle. So here I am. Go back to the inside. What's so good about using this type of um, fuzzy or frizzy fabric is that it covers up so much of all of the stuff you don't want to see, like all of this, and it really makes it much easier. I know this is looking kind of hard, it's just because of how I'm trying to hold it and angle it for you guys for the camera, but really and truly this is so simple and covers it so well. Okay, and now all I need to do is just weave this in, which I probably will use a crochet hook because the piece is short and my needle's long. So once you weave that in, you are all done. I did it like this because I try to make each design just a little different. Now that I've completed this, I actually decided, I think I wanna add the pink starting here. So I am going to just add this the same way we've been adding cord, but I'm going to have to use my needle the whole time to wrap. I just think that it needs 
this as the finishing touch. So you don't have to do this, but you can. And now that you're seeing it, you can actually do it before you end it the way that I just did. So I'm going to wrap this and hopefully I will like it. I think I will. So basically I'm just going to do the single wrap all the way down with the pink. Okay, I like this so much better. I feel like it just needed just a little extra something. So I'm just going to weave this down here at the bottom now. And that is it. Okay, there it is, completed. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.